Back then, we lived in a world far from today's constant news stream. Stories that didn't hit the radio, newspapers, or TV screens were in the shadows. Sure, we knew Kurt Cobain was battling his demons, but only those inside the music circle knew the full story. After Nevermind, Nirvana had become just another gold mine that everyone wanted a piece of. And that didn't sit well with Kurt. Even the atmosphere within the band changed. Kurt stopped talking to bandmates Chris and Dave Grohl. No one was very happy with the tour or the band. Even Buzz Osborne from the Melvins aired rumors of Kurt wanting out. And did you know Courtney stirred controversy by claiming Kurt left a farewell note just weeks before his death? Stay tuned as we dive into the events that led to Kurt's breakdown in Rome on March 4th before his actual death a month later. He was very apologetic. No, 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 I'm sorry, it's a big mistake. I was, I was drinking these champagne and I was in Rome. I just made a mistake. This incident was unfortunately overlooked by his friends and family. In February 1994, the band went on a big tour in Europe, which was said to be their last one together. Because Buzz Osborne, who was touring with Nirvana at the time, mentioned that Kurt was planning to break up the band soon. During that time, Kurt was having a tough time. He couldn't find what he usually took in Europe, which led to him suffer from withdrawal while on tour. He was also feeling homesick, missing his wife and daughter, and the stress of touring was affecting his health and mood. Additionally, there was tension in the band. Kurt wasn't talking to Chris and Dave Grohl, and the only band member he was still communicating with was Pat Smear. We've made a detailed video about Pat, so be sure to watch it later. According to the book I Found My Friends, the band's mood changed during their last tour, shifting from excitement to a very negative atmosphere. This was because Nirvana was performing identical one and a half hour shows every night and Kurt was constantly complaining of illness, boredom, and feeling old. At this stage, being in Nirvana was no longer enjoyable for the members. They had contracts and obligations, and stopping could lead to legal trouble. Nirvana had become like a cash cow that needed to earn money for others, and Kurt hated it. En avant-première des concerts qu'ils donneront ce mois-ci aux huit coins de l'Hexagone, c'est dans nulle part ailleurs qu'ils font leur première apparition de l'histoire à la télévision française. Et rappelez-vous, si c'est trop fort, c'est que public aimé Nirvana. Originally, the tour was supposed to last for three months, covering the whole of Europe until April 8. However, it ended early with their last concert on March 1st. This final show took place in an old airplane hangar called Terminal 1 in Germany in front of around 3,000 people. The place wasn't fancy, and the sound quality was bad. Kering Magazine mentioned that the band seemed uninterested. And according to writer Charles Cross, Kurt Cobain skipped the sound check asking the tour manager for money instead and went to the train station probably to score. Additionally, before the concert in Munich, Kurt had a fight over the phone with his wife. He even talked to his lawyer about wanting a divorce, according to the book Nirvana FAQ by John Lurson. At the show, Nirvana started with a cover of the Cars track My Best Friend's Girl, which might have been hinting at his troubles with his wife Courtney Love. A few songs into their set, Nirvana played Come As You Are. Then the power went out. When it came back on, they were supposed to play Snells like Teen Spirit, but skipped it as they often did. This time, bassist Krist Novoselic made a joke or possibly foreshadowed the future. Pat Smear mentioned to The Guardian that Kurt's voice became more trashed with every song. 
His voice was so gone, but instead of trying to conserve it, Kurt seemed to enjoy pushing it to the limit. Which brings us to our sponsor for today. For all the guitarists out there looking for an electrifying new way to play, here's something just for you. Imagine strumming alongside legends like Nirvana, feeling every beat, every riff, as if you're right there on stage with them. Well, now you can. Head over to BackingTrack.net and dive into a massive library of over 4,000 guitar backing tracks. And here's the best part. Enter our exclusive code SSROCK at checkout page, and you'll score a cool 25% off. So why wait? Grab your guitar, get your tracks, and play as if you're the newest member of a band. After finishing, Kurt told their agent, Don Muller, in backstage, that's it, it's over, indicating the tour was finished. The very next day, a doctor diagnosed him with laryngitis and bronchitis. At that moment, Grohl headed home, but Kurt and Pat Smear, who reportedly was the only one in the band that Cobain was on talking terms with, headed to Rome to meet Courtney Love and Francis Bean. By March 3rd, Kurt was in Rome, Italy. But unfortunately, this trip would cast a long shadow over the following weeks. Courtney told Rolling Stone in December 1994 that she was away for 40 days with her band Hole when she got a call from Kurt. He was crying and in a dark place. He was finding it hard to cope with fame and his personal issues. I don't think Kurt wanted to be a huge fucking rock star. And uh, I don't think he could handle how complicated it had all become. Hearing this, Courtney decided to drop everything and go to Rome to be with him. On their last evening together before the incident, Kurt and Courtney had a quiet night with room service and a rare bottle of champagne. The next morning, March 4th, Courtney woke up at about 5.30 a.m. and found Kurt unresponsive on the floor near their bed. Courtney said that Kurt had taken 50 tablets, along with the remaining bottle from the night before. She quickly called the hotel's front desk for help and an ambulance took Kurt to Umberto Polyclinic Hospital. Hi, I'm Tabitha Soren with MTV News. Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain was hospitalized in a coma in Rome, Italy on Friday morning. Pat Smear accompanied him to the hospital. In the Foo Fighters documentary Back Forth, he recounted his dilemma about being torn between announcing Kurt as a VIP to ensure immediate care or downplaying his identity to avoid attracting media attention. I finally went with, this is Kurt Cobain. Um, VIP, do something about it. There, doctors emptied his stomach. He was then transferred to Rome American Hospital, where he woke up a few hours later. 27-year-old singer was back to normal and doing fine. Doctors have said that Cobain would not suffer any permanent damage. News got better Saturday when Cobain regained consciousness. The doctor said Cobain's recovery was in part due to the quick thinking of his wife. Some people thought this event was just another event in Kurt's history of misuse, while Courtney and those close to him saw it as a clear indication of what would happen later. She mentioned a note he left that said, Dr. Baker says I would have to choose between life and death. I'm choosing death. Whether the incident was accidental remains unclear. Kurt's management and the doctor who treated him suggested it was unintentional. The doctor who cared for him at the hospital disagreed with Courtney's claim of 50 pills, as detailed in the book Love and Death, suggesting that the circumstances didn't appear intentional to him given his typical experience with such cases. So who do you think is telling the truth, the doctors or the wife? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Every week, we're committed to bringing you new content, and your support is crucial in helping us achieve this goal. Thank you for being a part of our journey. Until next time.